New homework assignment. By definition, people don't want to do homework. I'm not saying this is a good thing. I'm just saying it's a homework assignment. Everyone should watch this movie to truly appreciate pacing. Kind of like in that way where you should try Diet Coke so you truly appreciate regular Coke. The pacing is... Oh, holy shit. Aloha! So Aloha is written and directed by the director of Jerry Maguire, Almost Famous. Good movies that you've seen and you're like, that dude's a good director, right? This is proof positive that a talented director will not always make a good movie. I don't even know where to start with this movie, so I'm gonna start with the main characters. Bradley Cooper's kind of a burnout in the military and Emma Stone's this up and comer. She's really jacked up, she's really energetic, she's really optimistic, almost to a stupid degree. You're like, you can't really believe that. There's no way. In any case, now this movie's gonna force these two to have a romance together because that's what needs to happen. And you buy it about as much as you think you're going to. Seriously, this is one of those find yourself romantic, awkward comedies. So the two main characters have to have chemistry. It's not there. I love Emma Stone. I love Bradley Cooper. Together, I guess they just don't work. In the same way I love cheeseburgers and ice cream. I guess you just shouldn't blend them together. Separately, beautiful. Their entire relationship in this movie reminded me of Screech and Lisa Turtle from Saved by the Bell. It's really the same thing. Screech is hyperactive. He's kind of an idiot. He just wants nothing more than to please Lisa. Lisa sees this proceeds to act like a shithead to him because. So basically Bradley Cooper's acting like a teenage girl in this movie. That's where we are. A lot of these lines in the trailer, I hate it when trailers do this, they show you lines, you're like, okay, it's just pulled from the movie, right? And then you watch the movie, you're like, nope, that line was delivered just so you could have it in the trailer. Like that scene in the trailer where Bill Murray has this great monologue about life and how it's just this vibrant thing that's gonna steamroll you with a wicked sense of humor and if you're not careful, it's gonna get you. And I was like, that's gonna be a great part. He's gonna be like, Bill Murray's gonna play this billionaire with a heart of gold and you're not gonna know he has a heart of gold until he says that monologue and it's all gonna make sense. No, literally what happens is everyone's hanging out at a party, it cuts over over to Bill Murray and this hot chick who has no lines in the movie looks to him and she goes, what's life? And then he has the monologue. And when the monologue's done, that scene is done. It didn't flow. It was awkward. It was out of place. And that's not the only place something like that happens in this movie. This entire movie feels like that. It's like a Frankenstein of scenes that don't really work together. It's like when Bradley Cooper in the trailer's ordering a coffee and he's like, hi, I'll take a double. And she's like, hey, sir, I'm so jacked for today. And he's like, make that a triple. That scene exists exactly how the scene exists in the trailer. It's like, it's just there to be in the trailer really awkwardly chopped together. I'm not gonna say this movie doesn't have moments of heart that make you step back and you're like, all right, that was done well. There are a couple of scenes, especially when the movie's wrapping up, you're like, okay, why didn't you hit these notes earlier on in the movie? It would be winning me over if I felt like there was, you know, a movie to go, but the movie's over, man. I checked out a long time ago. And if you've seen the movie, you know who I'm talking about. If you haven't seen the movie, good for you. There is a character in this movie that Bradley Cooper should have had more screen time with, should have built a bigger relationship with. Didn't happen whatsoever and it's just a complete waste. Guys, in the end, Aloha is a wreck. It's a mess. There are moments when it gleams through and you can almost see where the vision was going, but it's buried under this convoluted ass story that tries to be more clever than it actually ends up being. The characters didn't work well together. The actors just didn't have chemistry. And in the end, you walk out knowing, not thinking, not suspecting, but knowing that you're really never going to watch this movie again because you're not going to remember Aloha and T minus one day. Yeah, already forgot. All right, guys, so we're going to go negative on this. I don't like being too negative. But let's go there. What is the movie with the shittiest chemistry among actors for you? Don't say Twilight. That's cheating. Don't say Fifty Shades of Grey. That's cheating too. Whatever you think, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.